I just decided, and it's re I don't have rhyme or reason. I grow the beard until I decide to cut it, and I cut it. <laughs> You trying to tell me something back there, guys? <laughs> ah. You did. You did. Yes, we do. Did you take time off after this? Or? I actually took time off during the Super Regionals. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'll, I'll take a little more time in late July. Thank you. Vanderbilt will be the home team tomorrow. Did they, did they, flip for that or? they did. Okay. Vanderbilt is the home team tomorrow. Was that done just now? Yes. It's done after the game. Zoom hide. Randomly, I'll decide to. More off in the head, but <laughs> decide, like, eh, and then. <laughs> Last year, I think I went all the way to November. Yeah. Again, I don't really. But I shave the head all the, I mean, the, sh the head I shave all the time, so.
representing Vanderbilt, head coach Tim Corbin, first baseman Xander Wheel, and starting pitcher Philip Pfeiffer. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Well, I think first off, uh, I, I thought Phil did a hell of a job. I, I thought he really, really pitched well. Uh, game sometimes has some bounces that uh, just get in your way. Like I said, last night's erratic. I thought he made a nice pitch to Paven Smith, and uh, he got inside the bat, but uh, Smith hit it the other way, and then this ball hit back up the middle that hit the bag. And, you know, just uh, from a bounce standpoint, it, it just didn't go our way. And you have to give those guys credit at the bottom. Clement and Woodruff did a good job tonight. They, they, they got the timely hit. They got the timely hit that we didn't. So uh, you, you, have to, you have to credit them. Uh, I thought Spores is, that was good. I, I just thought the kid, you know, he's kind of a bend but not break kid. Uh, and any time he got in trouble, he made big pitches to get himself out of it. You can tell he's been out there before. Uh, he's advanced, um, and you have to give him credit. So uh, that's essentially it. As I open the floor to question, a couple of reminders. Please silence your phones, turn off video recording devices, and introduce yourself. We'll begin here on the left side in the fourth row. <coughs> Go ahead, Adam. Okay. Adam, with the Tennessee, Adam Swartz with Tennessee. And for Tim, mm -hmm. uh, is it, uh, do you feel like the offensive problems are just lack of hits or lack of converting those into something once you get runners on? I just think that when, when there were runners in scoring position, that they just made good pitches. Uh, you just got to give Hazley and Spores a, a lot of credit because I, I thought they did a good job of commanding the ball. Um, and, and then their defense did a good job of their coaches putting their defense in good position. The ball that Reynolds hit was hit relatively hard back up the middle, but Panero was in the right spot, tagged the bag, and converted into a double play. Um, we had some hard hit balls. At certain times, it were just caught. So um, it, it, that happens. Coach Corbin, this is uh, Don Bowen, Omaha Sun Times. Listen, uh, after five innings, basically deja vu from last yeah. night. What were you trying to do to kind of get your kids motivated and kind of uh, get them uh, going into a different direction than what happened? Oh, just screaming and yelling at them at the top of my lungs. Uh, I mean, you know, what, what are you going to do? You give them a Vince Lombardi speech? They're trying. They're kids. They're, they're, they want to hit, too. Uh, really nothing. Just encouraging them more than anything else. Uh, and I, I thought, you know, even during the middle of that game and even at the end of it, I, I thought they were very positive. Uh, I thought that we were going to crack it open at some point and always do. It, it just didn't happen tonight. Ben Weiner with the Vanderbilt Hustler. Phil, can you walk <laughs> us through the first two innings? What helped you get out of those jams early on? Um... You know, uh, uh, having runners in scoring position isn't anything new for me, um, especially early on. So uh, kind of just the experience of being out there before, um, being able to make tough pitches and, and, uh, and you know, get those outs. Um, you know, it, I relieved earlier in the season, and I think that experience helps me relieve for myself sometimes. Isabel Kershuti in Washington Post. Uh, Tim, what did you know of Adam Hazley coming into today, and what did you think of his outing after he hadn't pitched in like a month? Not a whole heck of a lot, to be honest with you. I mean, we had scouting reports on him, but he had 10 appearances. He had four starts, so uh, we, we didn't know a whole lot about him. Uh, yeah, it, very commendable. Freshman, um, usually a reliever, uh, comes into a situation, stops a good offensive team, uh, we, we really didn't do much against him. You know, he, he did a nice job of slowing us down. So, you, again, you, you just have to give a kid like that credit, especially being on the mound for the first time. Now, I know he's played, but being on the mound for the first time and pitching like he did, he did a nice job. Aaron. Aaron Fitt, D1 Baseball. Um, Phil, when you're facing Virginia, maybe you don't expect, you know, those eight and nine hitters, and one of them, I think, has really basically been a pinch runner most of the year. Maybe you don't expect those guys uh, to come up with the big hits, but how were they able to get you today? Um, you know, they, they ended up just putting the ball in play and it found a hole. Um, you know, they, they have a good team, um, you know, they're experienced and they're, they have good plate discipline. Um, and they were able to lay off the off speed out of the zone. Um, and they ended up, you know, doing what they could with what they got and ended up getting through. We have time for three more questions. Adam? Adam Sparks, Tennessee, and for Xander, uh, 
with the lack of scoring early in, in some of these games, is it is it as easy as just wiping the slate clean for tomorrow's game so we're going to get the hits tomorrow, or do you see one overall problem in the offense? Uh, well, I think <clears throat> you have to. You have to just wipe the slate clean, you know. You can't carry a game like that with you. Um, obviously, we struggled tonight offensively, but, um, you know, we just got to – have a clear mind going into tomorrow and just do what we do every day. And that's, you know, trust our preparation, trust our BP, and uh, we'll be ready to go tomorrow. Chris Lee with Vandy Sports and National Sports Radio. Tim, uh, other than your two starters, everybody available to pitch tomorrow? Oh, I would think so. I think you get to this point of tournament and uh, everyone's on go. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, with the exception of Carson, but you know he'll be fighting to grab the ball if if – in a situation that was worthy. But uh, no, I, I think the bullpen is all ready to go for tomorrow. We have time for one final question. Uh, Jim Schoenert from Baseball America. Xander, just kind of asking you the same question that we asked the coach about uh, Hazley. Just what, 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 were you, what was your perspective on what he was doing and just what did you guys do to try to, to adjust to him? Uh, well, I, th I think he did a good job. You know, we didn't know all that much against uh, about him. But, um, you know, he did a good job locating. He uh, used his fastball and his off-speed stuff to his advantage, and we just weren't able – we got some uh, runners on, but uh, we were never able to get that big hit, like Coach said. And, uh, you know, then they got to spores later in the game, and he did a good job holding us down too. So, uh, you know, they did – Virginia did a good job. I'd like to thank the Vanderbilt student athletes and Coach Corbin for joining us. Tomorrow, Vanderbilt will be the home team in the CWS Finals Game 3. Representing Virginia, head coach Brian O'Connor, right fielder Thomas Woodruff, relief pitcher Josh Spores, and starting pitcher Adam Hazley. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Well, just we're, we're excited that we have a chance to play again tomorrow night. And um, certainly, you know, Adam Hazley rose to the occasion on the mound and gave us a just a high quality start. And, you know, Josh Spores, did what he's been doing this entire tournament and you know grinded out the back half of the game and showed what he's made of and then this guy here um you know i, I don't know when the last time he started a game was but uh, certainly uh, he put some great swings on the baseball and and uh played some great right field and it's just a total team effort and just really proud that we have another chance to play and uh, looking forward to tomorrow night We'll open the floor to questions. Begin with Jeff. Uh, Jeff White, VirginiaSports.com. Brian, you went with a lineup that you have not used before, I think, or don't use often. What went into the decision to start Thomas? 
Well, um, once I had made the decision to start Adam Hazley on the, the mound, um, it was clear that that was the right thing to do. And, you know, this guy has been as unselfish and as a team player as you could possibly be for four years. And, you know, uh, I really believe that, you know, at the most important time, you get rewarded for that. And, you know, certainly it showed true today. And, you know, it, and it worked. We just did enough. Andrew? Yeah, Andrew, Rance Packard, Daily Progress. Brian, your eight, nine hole hitters, including Thomas, went six for eight today with, with three RBI. You had Adam come on the hill, first time starting in a month, and you win this game. This kind of sum up a little bit this, this ride you've been on this last month? I, I, th I think so. It, it certainly does. Um, I'm also a big believer that, you know, to be in this position to compete for a national championship, you, guys, you need guys to rise to the occasion, you know, that maybe – hadn't yet or that what people didn't expect. I think if you go back and you know look at the history of this event, there's been players that have emerged and got big hits or you know pitch quality innings for their team. And uh, tonight was certainly a case of that. Kendall. Kendall Rogers, D1 Baseball. Brian, you know, you look throughout the history of the World Series and, and guys that you know you see their their pictures on posters and things like that. You almost kind of feel like Josh is kind of become that guy in this World Series? I guess as a coach, when you sit back and just watch what he's he's done in this World Series, what's, what's kind of going through your head? Uh, just, you know, I, uh, Josh Spores, since he has been here, and really specifically the last two years, has every time we've asked this guy to pitch a big ball game for us, whether it be game three of the Super Regional last year against Maryland, um, you know, when, whenever it's been this year, numerous times, uh, last year, he has taken his game uh, to a different level. And he, you can see, Kendall, how, how talented he is. And, you know, he's just a model of, of consistency. And, you know, in order to have a chance to win this thing, you need somebody like that to really step up. And, you know, he's done the job all year. But certainly, you know, during these two weeks, he's been really exceptional. Isabel? Uh, Isabel Crusciuti in Washington Post. Brian, you had said coming into this, you guys were going to piece it together pitching. Did mm -hmm. you get more than you even maybe expected out of Adam in that start? Oh, I don't, I, I'm not sure, you know. Um, you know, the, I just know this, the, the last time he started a ball game was, you know, what, against NC State in the, in the uh, conference tournament uh, four weeks ago? The last time he pitched for us, you know, so... Uh, you just don't know how it's going to go, but I know this. He's 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 got a lot of pride. He's got a lot of pride in his teammates. Uh, this guy has been in high school. He's been on the world stage playing for USA Baseball and performed at a very very high level. And so I I knew that he wouldn't be in awe of this situation. You know, twenty five thousand people, everything on the line. I knew he would go out there and throw strikes and give us a chance. I had no idea how deep he'd pitch, and I'm, I'm glad that he gave us five strong innings. Andrew? Yeah, Andrew Rance, Packer, Daily Progress. Adam, what, was, what were your nerves like? Did you have any coming into this? Uh, and did it help that you didn't come into this? I mean, yeah, you haven't been on the mound in Omaha yet, but you've been in center field. And then uh, for Josh, we just want to follow up just with what you saw from, from Adam in those, those first five innings. Adam, could you begin, please? Yeah, um, I think it was a different kind of nerves than uh, just like your regular game from you know playing in the field. Um, but I do think you know playing some games before this in the field and um, being out there and um, you know having some playing time did help. You know you're already familiar with how you know how the field kind of plays, how um, the game goes. So it did help a little bit playing before. Josh, do you have anything to add? Um, he just came out really confident and excited to pitch for his team. I mean, it was pretty clear that he was relaxed and. Just throughout the game, he was extremely efficient, was able to get four or five innings, I think, and was just able to keep us in it. Jeff? Uh, this is for Thomas. Thomas, you've scored the winning run at the College World Series a couple times, but never had a game like this. What was the experience like for you? Um, it was definitely new. Um, I honestly, I didn't feel as nervous as I expected to. Uh, I was kind of relaxed, um, just trying to enjoy it. Um, you know, this or, you know, I guess now tomorrow could have been, you know, my last college game. So just trying to go out there and enjoy it. Um, you know, definitely a new experience and very exciting. Don. 
Uh, Coach Don Bow in Omaha sometimes. Um, tomorrow, this is the I mean, tomorrow's it. I mean, what are you guys, how are you going to go into tomorrow differently than today? Are you going to try and hold the same game plan? What's going through your head? Tomorrow will be no different than, you know, any game that we've played here in Omaha this year. You know, um, I'm going to say it again, this team's earned the right to play another ball game, and that's how they will treat it. I don't think they'll put any more into it than they have at this point. Uh, certainly, we're going to have to play great baseball to beat a, a great Vanderbilt club. And, um, you know, they'll just continue to go out there and play the best they can, and hopefully in the end, you have a chance to win the ball game. We have time for three more questions. Aaron? Aaron Fitt, D1 Baseball. Thomas, you know, you, um, you've been such a, a great team guy kind of waiting for your chance to contribute any time you can to get a chance like this, you know, to start and get three hits in the College World Series. I mean, is it kind of surreal? And, and Coach, if you could comment on just you know, this guy being a good soldier for so long and then having this chance today. Thomas, if you'd begin. It's definitely a little surreal, but um, I think the approach that I try to take in practice and treat it like a game and treat it – you know, like every repetition matters. Um, you know, you, you get out there and everything is just like practice and it kind of slows down and you don't expect it, but you know and you're confident in your abilities and, you know, you, you can trust your preparation much better. Coach? Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, this guy, you know, on Friday night at the opening ceremonies got the award for the top student athlete, you know, um, you know, graduated with, I don't know, three eight, three seven, three eight in engineering from the University of Virginia. And, um, you know, I know his teammates will say the same thing, that, you know, every practice, this guy has given it everything he's had, um, you know, has always been a team player and just, you know, been there for his teammates. He's a, he's a player that the coaches feel like they can go to and get to get valuable input. And, you know, this is what the experience is supposed to be, you know, and, um, you know, you just wish in college baseball that you'd be able to give more guys opportunities like this guy um, got when he was a, a freshman and he stuck around and I'm a big believer he's being rewarded for it. Jim. Jim Callis from MLB.com. Brian, I know this one's still probably sinking in a little bit, but have you thought much about the pitching plan for tomorrow? Can, <laughs> <laughs> how much could we see Brandon Waddell or Nathan Kirby, and is it realistic to expect that close game late we might see Josh for an inning? You will not see Josh Boris tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> uh, he, sorry, Josh. Uh, Brandon Waddell will start tomorrow night. Um, Past that, I'm not sure, Jim, what, what we'll do. But um, this was kind of how we had mapped it out, you know, when we had looked at this about a week ago on what was going to give us the best chance to put our team in a chance to win a championship. Um, and here we are, and, you know, Waddell's going to get the ball, but, you know, we'll see where we go from there. Andrew. Yeah, Andrew Rance Packer. Josh, uh, I guess that's your, your current call then, but. That's a hell of a way to end it in that ninth inning. You were throwing, I think, 77 pitches um, tonight after going 50-plus the other day. What was that, that, that ninth like? And, and you got you know two guys on. You've been getting out of these jams here pretty regularly over the last month or so. What was that like for you to get out of it? I mean, the whole game, they just battled. They were able to get my pitch, up, pitch count up pretty quickly. But uh, I was just trying to get out of it, just trying to win with the lead. And I wasn't really thinking about giving up runs. I mean, if they scored one or two, I, didn't really, I wasn't going to get upset. I was just thinking about get this game over with, win, and try to kind of save the bullpen as much as possible. And our final question. Katie Hamilton, Journal Star in Lincoln. For Brian, what, if somebody was to ask you before the game that Adam would have the game he had and Thomas would have the game he had, would you have said less than your normal lineup? Or how would you have reacted? Uh, I, Can I you don't. repeat the question for me here? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, you got it? He got it. I'm yeah, sorry. Like, My bad. What chance would that have happened is basically what you're saying. You know, um, I, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, I would have told you that I know what these two guys are made of. You know, I know the kind of people they are. Uh, I know how much they care about their teammates. 
you know, I know that they'll go out there and give us everything that they have. Um, you know, I don't like to put percentages on things that oh, could this possibly happen? Anything can happen. And, you know, it does surprise me because I know how hard these two individuals work and I know how much their teammates mean to them. I'd like to thank the Virginia student-athletes and Coach O'Connor for joining us. Virginia will be the visiting team in tomorrow's CWS Game 3. For individual interviews, please coordinate with Andrew outside the room.